Let's go to sleep. Sorry, I'm late. In the early 1960s, the casting process for the charming TV series Mr. Ed brought together a talented group of actors who would bring the show to life. The series revolved around a talking horse named Mr. Ed and his owner, Wilbur Post, played by Alan Young. The producers of the show, Arthur Lubin and Walter Brooks, first needed to find the right actor to portray the lovable and gullible Wilbur Post. After a series of auditions, they chose Alan Young, an experienced radio, film, and television actor. Young's wholesome and sincere demeanor made him the perfect fit for the role. Next, they had to find the right horse to play Mr. Ed. After testing several horses, they found a Palomino horse named Bamboo Harvester, who had the right temperament and intelligence for the role. To create the illusion of Mr. Ed talking, a series of voice actors were hired, with Alan Rocky Lane providing the horse's voice for the majority of the series. The casting of Wilbur's wife, Carol Post, was another crucial decision. After considering several actresses, they chose Connie Hines, who had experience in both film and television. Hines' chemistry with Young was undeniable, and she brought a warmth and charm to the role that endeared her to audiences. The final piece of the casting puzzle was the choice of the Post neighbors, Gordon and Kay Jones, played by Larry Keating and Edna Skinner. Keating, a seasoned stage and screen actor, brought a dry wit and sardonic humor to the role, while Skinner's comedic timing and physicality added to the show's charm. Overall, the casting process for Mr. Ed was a careful and deliberate one, with each actor chosen for their unique talents and abilities. The result was a beloved TV series that captured the hearts of audiences for years to come. What ostrich? How did you know it was an ostrich? The director of Mr. Ed, Arthur Lubin, was known for his comedic touch and ability to work with animals, which was evident in his work on this classic TV series. Lubin's approach to directing Mr. Ed was heavily influenced by his experience in directing films with the iconic comedy duo Abbott and Costello. He brought a lighthearted and playful style to the show, which helped to create its unique charm. Lubin's collaboration with the cast and crew was also crucial to the success of Mr. Ed. He worked closely with the show's writers to ensure that the humor was consistent and that the storylines were engaging. Lubin also had a strong relationship with the show star, Mr. Ed himself, a talking horse. Lubin spent a lot of time working with the animatronic horse, making sure that its movements and expressions were believable and added to the comedic timing of the show. In addition to his work with Mr. Ed, Lubin was also known for his work on other classic TV series such as The Munsters and My Favorite Martian. His ability to bring a sense of whimsy and humor to these shows helped to establish him as a respected and successful director in the industry. Overall, Arthur Lubin's directorial vision for Mr. Ed was instrumental in bringing the story to life and creating a show that has endured in popularity for over six decades. His comedic style, collaboration with the cast and crew, and ability to work with animals helped to make Mr. Ed a beloved classic that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. Mr. Ed was a popular TV series that aired from 1961 to 1966, featuring a talking horse and his owner. My first time watching the show was the enduring qualities of Mr. Ed that make it an everlasting symbol of the industry include its unique concept, clever humor, and relatable characters. Throughout the series, there were many funny, shocking, and even sad moments that kept viewers engaged. From Mr. Ed's mischievous antics to the heartwarming moments between him, and his owner, this show had it all. As we continue to explore the world of Mr. Ed, we'll uncover some surprising facts about the show that you may not have known before. From behind the scenes secrets to little known trivia, we'll dive deep into the history of this beloved series. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Mr. Ed? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Together, let's take a trip down memory lane and rediscover the magic of this classic TV series. Hey, he says somebody's playing a joke on me. Pull a trick like that. Obviously, it was one of... The 1961 TV series, Mr. Ed, presented unique challenges in its production, particularly in set design and filming. 
the show featured a talking horse, Mr. Ed, which required innovative techniques to bring the animated character to life. The production team built a special stable set for Mr. Ed, complete with a moving floor to create the illusion that the horse was talking. To achieve this, they placed a platform on rollers underneath the floor, which was activated by a hydraulic system to move up and down. This allowed Mr. Ed's mouth to appear to be moving as if he were talking. The show was primarily filmed on sound stages in Los Angeles, with the stable set being one of the main locations. The production team took great care to create a realistic and detailed set, complete with hay, saddles, and other equine accessories. They also had to ensure that the set was safe for the horses and the actors. One of the logistical challenges of filming Mr. Ed was working with the horses. The production team had to train the horses to perform various actions on cue, such as walking, standing, and nodding their heads. They also had to ensure that the horses were comfortable and calm on set. Another challenge was synchronizing the audio of Mr. Ed's voice with the horse's mouth movements. To achieve this, the sound engineers recorded the voiceover first, and then played it back while filming the horse's mouth movements. They used a series of cues and markers to ensure that the audio and visuals were aligned correctly. The production team also employed various visual effects to enhance the show's fantastical elements. For example, they used rear projection to create the illusion of Mr. Ed driving a car or walking through different locations. They also used matte paintings to create the backgrounds and set extensions. Overall, the production of Mr. Ed required careful planning, attention to detail, and innovative techniques to bring the talking horse to life. Despite the challenges, the show became a beloved classic, entertaining audiences for generations. You can say that again, Ed. <laughs> Mr. Ed was a popular television series that originally aired in 1961, aimed at children but still enjoyable for all ages. The show revolves around the character of Wilbur, played by Alan Young, who is the perfect straight man to a talking horse named Mr. Ed. Despite the trouble Mr. Ed's talking gets Wilbur into, the fun of the show lies in the fact that the horse will only talk to him, leaving Wilbur to clean up the messes. As a child, I have fond memories of watching Mr. Ed and finding it hilarious. Even today, as a teenager, I can appreciate the timeless humor of the show. With many standout episodes, such as Mr. Ed surfing in Hawaii, flying a plane, and driving a car, I would love to see them all again. I highly recommend Mr. Ed to anyone who has the opportunity to watch it. The show's charm lies in the unique premise of a talking horse and the chemistry between Wilbur and Mr. Ed. Despite the trouble Mr. Ed causes, Wilbur's reactions and attempts to clean up after the horse make for entertaining television. The show's humor and memorable episodes make it a must watch for both children and adults. Unfortunately, I have only seen less than half of the series and would love for it to be released on DVD for wider accessibility. I hope that young children today get the chance to experience the joy and laughter that Mr. Ed brings. The show's humor and memorable episodes make it a must-watch for both children and adults, and I highly recommend giving it a watch if you have the chance. The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is an essential aspect of filmmaking, and the 1961 TV series Mr. Ed was no exception. The show's music, composed by Jay Livingston and Ray Evans, complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the series, which centered around a talking horse named Mr. Ed. The composers aimed to create music that would enhance the show's humor and light-hearted tone. They used a variety of instruments, including pianos, xylophones, and horns, to create catchy and memorable tunes. The show's theme song, A Man and His Horse, became a hit and is still remembered today. The musicians involved in the creation of the soundtrack also played a crucial role. The show's orchestra, led by conductor Jack Marshall, brought the composer's music to life, adding energy and emotion to each scene. The musicians had to be skilled and versatile as they had to switch between different styles of music from upbeat and playful to slow and sentimental. The music in Mr. Ed served to enhance the show's narrative and emotional tone. For instance, the upbeat music that played during Mr. Ed's antics added to the show's humor and lightheartedness. 
On the other hand, the slower, more sentimental music that played during emotional scenes helped to convey the characters' feelings and add depth to the story. In creating the musical score and soundtrack for Mr. Ed, Livingston, and Evans drew upon their extensive experience as composers. They had previously worked together on a number of successful film and television projects, including the movies Pal Joey and Charade, as well as the TV show Bonanza. Their expertise in creating music for visual media helped to ensure that the music in Mr. Ed was well suited to the show's tone and narrative. In conclusion, the creation of the musical score and soundtrack for Mr. Ed was a collaborative effort involving composers, musicians, and other industry professionals. The music they created played a crucial role in enhancing the show's narrative and emotional tone and helped to make Mr. Ed a beloved and enduring classic. Rummy games. Yeah. So let's throw them out. <laughs> this is a private home. Alan Young, who played Wilbur Post in Mr. Ed, outlived his co-star Alan Lane by 32 years and his TV wife Connie Hines by 18 years. Interestingly, Young was 12 years older than Hines. In the show, Wilbur Post was depicted as a U.S. Air Force veteran who served with a Colonel Kirkwood. In reality, actor Larry Keating, who played the role of Kirkwood, continued to work on Mr. Ed one week before his death in 1963. These behind-the-scenes facts add depth to the show, revealing the real-life camaraderie between the cast members and the military service of Wilbur Post. One of the most iconic scenes in Mr. Ed, the 1961 TV series, is when the talking horse, Mr. Ed, makes his first appearance. The scene is set in Wilbur Post Barn, and the direction is simple yet effective. The camera focuses on Wilbur as he enters the barn, and slowly pans to reveal Mr. Ed, who greets him with a casual hello, Wilbur. The understated direction allows the audience to discover the talking horse alongside Wilbur, creating a sense of wonder and delight. Alan Young's performance as the surprised and bewildered Wilbur is both genuine and endearing. His reactions to Mr. Ed's talking are subtle and believable, making the scene all the more charming. Young's comedic timing is impeccable, and he plays off of Mr. Ed's deadpan delivery with ease. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy. The use of shadows and light creates a warm and inviting atmosphere in the barn and the camera angles highlight the unique relationship between Wilbur and Mr. Ed. The scene is shot in a way that makes the audience feel as though they are right there in the barn with Wilbur and Mr. Ed. This iconic scene has had a significant impact on audiences. It has become a beloved moment in television history and has captured the hearts of viewers for generations. The scene's simplicity and charm have made it a timeless classic and it continues to delight audiences today. According to Alan Young, the scene was a challenge to film due to the need to coordinate the dialogue between himself and Mr. Ed. However, he credits the success of the scene to the chemistry between him and the horse. He has said in interviews that he and Mr. Ed had a special bond and that this bond is evident in their performances. In conclusion, the iconic scene in Mr. Ed where the talking horse makes his first appearance is a testament to the power of simple yet effective direction, strong performances, and clever cinematography. The scene has had a lasting impact on audiences and has become a beloved moment in television history. For a second showdown. <laughs> Connie Hines, who played Wilbur Post's wife in Mr. Ed, retired to Dana Point, CA, in 1989. Her co-star Alan Young had recommended the place to her. Hines developed an interest in animals and hosted a local cable access show about them. The show featured interviews with veterinarians and animal behaviorists and offered animals for adoption. Mr. Ed, the talking horse, had a mind of his own. When he got tired of working, he would simply walk off the set. The horse only responded to his trainer, Lester Hilton. This meant that Hilton had to be present on set at all times, giving commands or signaling them to the horse. Hilton's presence was necessary because Ed wouldn't respond to any of his co-stars. This made the production process challenging, but the crew managed to work around it. Despite these challenges, Mr. Ed became a beloved TV series known for its unique premise and charming cast. 
All right. That's fine. Go Mr. Ed, the 1961 TV series about a talking horse became a surprise hit and resonated with audiences due to its unique premise and wholesome humor. The show featured Wilbur Post, a good-natured architect, and his wife Carol, who owned a talking horse named Mr. Ed. The horse only spoke to Wilbur, leading to humorous situations and conversations. Mr. Ed was a reflection of the post-war American dream, showcasing suburban life and the importance of friendship. The show's light-hearted nature provided a welcome escape from the realities of the time, making it a popular choice for families. The series contributed to pop culture by inspiring various merchandise, including toys, games, and even a comic book series. Mr. Ed's character appeared in other TV shows and commercials, further solidifying its place in popular culture. Mr. Ed also touched on social themes relevant to its time. For instance, the show often portrayed Wilbur's struggles to balance his career and family life, reflecting the changing roles of men and women in society during the 1960s. Moreover, Mr. Ed's ability to communicate with Wilbur, albeit only in private, can be seen as a metaphor for understanding and empathy between different species. This theme resonated with audiences who found the relationship between Wilbur and Mr. Ed both entertaining and thought-provoking. In conclusion, Mr. Ed, with its unique premise, wholesome humor, and exploration of social themes, left a lasting impact on popular culture and resonated with audiences of the time. I'll get you that new refrigerator. Well, you have got yourself a deal. In the popular 1960s TV series, Mr. Ed, Larry Keating played the role of the neighbor. Interestingly, both Keating and Arthur Lubin, the producer and most frequent director of Mr. Ed, had previously worked together on another series featuring a talking equine, Francis the Talking Mule. Keating starred in Francis Goes to the Races, and Lubin directed six Francis movies. The catchy theme song of Mr. Ed was initially recorded as a demo by Jay Livingston, who intended to have a professional singer re-record it. However, the producers liked Livingston's vocals and decided to keep his version in the show. How does Mr. Ed like him, Wilbur? Is he jealous? Oh no, he wants to adopt the little fella. Mr. Ed, the Talking Horse television series that aired from 1961 to 1966, received mixed reviews from critics, but was a hit with audiences. The show's lighthearted and whimsical concept, along with the charming performance of the title character, helped it gain a large following. Critics have noted the show's simple and straightforward humor, with some praising its ability to provide easy and enjoyable viewing. However, others have criticized it for its lack of depth and sophistication. Despite these mixed reviews, Mr. Ed was nominated for several awards during its run, including a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Children's Program in 1963. The show's nomination for a Primetime Emmy Award is a significant accolade, as it indicates that the show was recognized by the television industry as one of the best in its category. This nomination would have helped to boost the show's profile and attract more viewers. Additionally, the show's popularity with audiences is also noteworthy. Mr. Ed was consistently one of the top-rated shows during its run, and it has remained a cult classic in the decades since it went off the air. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to its appeal and the fond memories it has created for generations of viewers. In conclusion, while Mr. Ed may not have been the critical darling, its nomination for a Primetime Emmy Award and its popularity with audiences are significant accolades that speak to the show's impact and enduring appeal. When you take Ilsa her dinner tonight, would you throw in a bouquet of carrots? <laughs> I'm sure she'll know who it's from. The television series Mr. Ed, which aired from 1961 to 1966, is noteworthy for its unique production history. It was one of the few shows to begin in syndication before being picked up by a major network, CBS. The show's initial production was handled by George Burns McCadden Productions, and the lead role of Wilbur Post was given to Alan Young due to Burns' belief that Young was the kind of person a horse would talk to. The animation of the horse's mouth to simulate speech proved to be too expensive, so a more cost-effective method was used. The horse, named Bamboo Harvester, was trained to move its lips in response to a string tickling its upper lip or a touch to its hoof. By the second year, the horse anticipating the cue would move its lips whenever Alan Young stopped talking. 
This bond between the horse and its trainer, Les Hilton, was so strong that the gelding would only respond to him. In summary, Mr. Ed was a television series that started in syndication and was later picked up by CBS. The show was produced by George Burns McCadden Productions, and the lead role was given to Alan Young. The unique aspect of the show was the use of a real horse, Bamboo Harvester, to play the character of Mr. Ed, with a simple yet effective method used to animate the horse's mouth during its speech. Are you going to let me have Ed, or aren't you? No, Gordon, I must be firm. Ed has got to be punished. He's looking forward to this parade. During the filming of Mr. Ed, the talking horse sitcom that aired from 1961 to 1966, several amusing and memorable incidents occurred behind the scenes. The show star, Mr. Ed, was played by a Palomino horse named Bamboo Harvester, who was known for his ability to convincingly move his lips as if talking. Contrary to popular belief, Mr. Ed's voice was not created by simply overdubbing human speech onto the horse's soundtrack. Instead, the show's sound engineer, Jim Fang Arrow, developed a unique technique for creating Mr. Ed's voice. He would record the sound of a person saying the desired line, then slow down the recording to create a deep, rumbling effect. This painstaking process often required numerous takes to achieve the desired Lieutenant of the cast, and crew of Mr. Ed also had to contend with the unpredictable behavior of the show's animal stars. In addition to Mr. Ed, the series featured a variety of other animals, including dogs, cats, and even a parrot. These animals often stole the show with their antics, causing unscripted disruptions and adding to the overall chaos of the set. One particularly memorable incident occurred during the filming of the episode Ed Discovers Wrestling. In this episode, Mr. Ed becomes fascinated with professional wrestling and begins training for a match. During a scene in which Mr. Ed is practicing his wrestling moves, the horse suddenly bucked and sent co-star Alan Young flying off camera. Young, who played the show's human protagonist, Wilbur Post, was unharmed, but the incident caused quite a stir on set. Despite the challenges of working with animals, the cast and crew of Mr. Ed developed a strong bond over the course of the show's five-year run. Many of the actors became close friends and remained in touch long after the series ended. One of the show's most enduring legacies is its impact on popular culture. Mr. Ed's catchphrase, a horse is a horse, of course, of course, has become a beloved piece of Americana, and the show's unique blend of humor and heart has inspired countless other television programs. In the end, the making of Mr. Ed was a true labor of love, with the cast and crew pouring their hearts and souls into every episode. While the show's behind-the-scenes anecdotes may be amusing, they also speak to the dedication and passion of the people who brought this beloved series to life. Prizes? Oh, hello? Mother, are you watching? <laughs> After a successful five-year run in primetime, CBS moved Mr. Ed to Sunday afternoons for its final season in 1966. The show's unique premise, focusing on the relationship between Wilbur and his talking horse, left little room for co-star Connie Hines to showcase her acting skills. She saw her role merely as a steady paycheck. Interestingly, the very first episode of Mr. Ed had to break the norm by starting with a cold opening, Sans theme song, and Mr. Ed addressing the audience. This was to prevent revealing the show's secret before viewers could tune in regularly. Despite the limitation, Mr. Ed became a beloved family sitcom, leaving a lasting impression on audiences of all ages. Mr. Ed, the 1961 TV series about a talking horse, may not immediately come to mind when considering significant contributions to film history. However, its impact is noteworthy. The show's innovative use of special effects, including the talking horse, was quite an achievement in its time, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in television production. Mr. Ed's influence can be seen in various subsequent works. For instance, the concept of talking animals, popularized by the show, has been a staple in many later productions, from family-friendly films like Charlotte's Web to animated series like The Simpsons and Bojack Horseman. The show also had a significant impact on comedy, introducing a unique blend of slapstick and witty dialogue that has been emulated in numerous sitcoms since. Mr. Ed's deadpan humor and the absurd situations it presented laid the groundwork for shows like Get Smart and The Addams Family, which followed shortly after. 
in terms of acting. Mr. Ed provided a platform for Alan Young, who played the owner of the talking horse, to showcase his comedic talents. Young's performance influenced future comedic actors, demonstrating the importance of subtle, understated delivery in contrast to over-the-top physical comedy. While Mr. Ed may not be as critically acclaimed or commercially successful as other shows of its time, its influence on special effect, comedy, and acting is undeniable. It left an indelible mark on the film industry, inspiring numerous productions, and contributing to the evolution of television and film. Alan Young, the lead actor in Mr. Ed, declined to have the show named after him, fearing backlash if it failed. The series, based on Walter R. Brooks' short stories, was initially syndicated from January 5 to July 2, 1961, and later aired on CBS from October 1, 1961, to February 6, 1966. The Studebaker Corporation, the original sponsor, provided the vehicles used in the show. Not the working type. Must be something he can do. I doubt it. He's too slow for the racetrack and too nervous to pull a wagon. Mr. Ed, the main character of the 1961 TV series, was a clever golden Palomino horse. The secret to getting Mr. Ed to talk was revealed by Alan Young in a 2001 interview. Lester, the trainer, used a soft nylon thread placed under Mr. Ed's lip, which was tugged gently to signal the horse to move his lips. In the second season, Mr. Ed had already learned to move his lips whenever Alan stopped talking. The house prominently featured in the series holds its own interesting history. After the show's run, it became the childhood home of singer Katie Rose. These facts provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world of Mr. Ed and the life of its equine star, as well as the enduring legacy of the show's filming location. <laughs> After the first seven episodes of Mr. Ed, the famous theme song with lyrics was introduced in Season 1, Episode 8, Pageant Show. The show, which aired from 1961, was a pioneer of the 1960s fantasy sitcoms, preceding other popular series like Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, My Favorite Martian, My Mother the Car, The Munsters, and The Addams Family. Interestingly, the friendship between Alan Young and Mr. Ed extended beyond the set, with Young frequently visiting Lester Hilton's ranch to ride the famous talking horse. Mr. Ed was not just a television show, but a unique blend of fantasy and humor that captured the hearts of audiences during its time. Uh, 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 well, he just happened to drop in for dinner, dear. Yes, yes, I was in the neighborhood and I thought... Mr. Ed, the famous talking horse from the 1961 TV series, was actually a horse and not a zebra as some rumors suggest. This fact was confirmed by Snopes, a well-known fact-checking website, in there the Lost Legends section, which is dedicated to debunking odd and silly stories. Connie Hines, who played Wilbur Post's wife in the show, considered her most important line to be honey, lunch is ready. Hines' portrayal of Carol Post added a touch of normalcy to the otherwise fantastical world of Mr. Ed. Alan Young, who played Wilbur Post, released a book titled Mr. Ed, In Me, and More in 2007. The book provided insights into his experiences working on the show and his relationship with Mr. Ed. In summary, Mr. Ed was a popular 1960s TV series featuring a talking horse with Connie Hines and Alan Young playing significant roles in the show. Hines and Young's contributions to the show have been remembered with Hines' most important line and Young's book shedding light on their experiences. Well, as a matter of fact, we're very close on terms, really. What do you mean? Close, doll. You said you were going to give... The horse that played the role of Mr. Ed lived to be around 30 years old, although the exact year of its death varies among different sources. The voice of Mr. Ed was provided by Alan Lane, a former cowboy star, which was kept as a well-guarded secret. Interestingly, Mr. Ed was trained to answer the telephone, although he couldn't actually talk. The horseshoe is cool. Wilbur Post, the main character in Mr. Ed, pursued his architectural studies at UCLA. The show's namesake, a talking horse, had a daily diet of 20 pounds of hay and a gallon of sweet tea. Interestingly, Alan Young, who played Wilbur Post, became quite wealthy due to his ownership stake in the series. The syndication and network runs of the show contributed significantly to his wealth. 
they're still not talking all on account of us. The television series Mr. Ed, which aired from 1961 to 1966, is remembered for its unique premise of a talking horse. Interestingly, the horse who played Mr. Ed could actually open the barn door, adding to the show's authenticity. Initially, CBS declined to air the series, so the Studebaker Corporation stepped in and syndicated it. The show became an instant success, leading CBS to buy it the following year. Actor Alan Young, who played Wilbur Post, reminisces about the show's makeup artist, Jack P. Pierce, in his book A Sci-Fi Swarm and Horror Horde. You know, I'll be able to sleep tonight. Problems, problems, Ed. In one episode of Mr. Ed, Alan Young took on a dual role, playing both Wilbur and his father, Angus Post. Interestingly, Angus was Young's real given name. Connie Hines, who played Wilbur's wife Carol, had an unusual audition experience. After trying out for the role, she waited for the call from producers at a gas station because she didn't have a phone in her apartment yet. Mr. Ed, the talking horse, had a birthday that was confirmed to be February 28, 1953. This makes him a Pisces. However, in a later episode, he contradicted himself, declaring he was a Taurus. It's interesting to note that Mr. Ed's character had a consistent personality, but his astrological sign seemed to change. Babies, we're only going away for the weekend. We're not fleeing the country. Is it our fault you men don't know how to pack a car? During the filming of Mr. Ed, the talking horse show that aired from 1961 to 1966, Alan Young, who played the lead role of Wilbur Post, had to dye his hair darker. His natural dark blonde hair blended too much into the black and white film, making it difficult to distinguish him from Mr. Ed. After the show's production ended, Young returned to his natural hair color. In 1963, Mr. Ed and Walt Disney's canine film star, Big Red, won Patsy Awards for Top Animal Performers of the Year, presented by the American Humane Society. Interestingly, long after the show had ceased production, a fundamentalist religious group in Ohio claimed that Mr. Ed's famous theme song was satanic. The show's popularity and syndicated reruns kept it in the public eye, making it a target for controversy. In summary, Mr. Ed's production faced some unexpected challenges, including the need for Alan Young to dye his hair and later, controversy over its theme song. Despite these issues, the show remained a beloved classic, earning awards and recognition during its initial run and in syndication. Uh, must be some other Wilbur Post. Living at the same address? Alan Young, best known for playing Wilbur Post in Mr. Ed, had his first name legally changed from Angus to Alan when he was 20. The name change was due to Americans frequently mispronouncing and making unflattering comments about his birth name. Regarding Mr. Ed's talking ability, Alan Young once shared a story during an interview with the Archive of American Television. When asked about the secret of how Mr. Ed talked, Young responded with a question, well, when you were a kid, did you ever get peanut butter stuck under your lip? The listener mistakenly concluded that this was how the trick was done, but Young later clarified that it was not true. Alan Young's portrayal of Wilbur Post and Mr. Ed remains his most well-known role to this day. Why don't you just take it easy? The way you're going about that, you'll push your hand right through that window. Alan Young, known for his role in Mr. Ed, is often seen singing the show's theme song at conventions. The Post phone number in the series was State 11 and 781. Interestingly, Mr. Ed, the talking horse, originated in a series of magazine stories where he not only talked, but also got drunk. The creation of this character and its backstory in magazines before its appearance on screen is a lesser known fact about the show. Look, Carol, there's plenty of room in the back seat. Mr. Ed's stunt double, Pumpkin, was a quarter horse who closely resembled Ed with the exception of a gold spot in the middle of his white blaze. This spot was covered with white makeup when Pumpkin stepped in for Ed. Donna Douglas, who played Wilbur's wife Carol on the show, moved to New York City in 1958 and studied at the actor's studio with Lee Strasberg. She won the Miss Byline Contest in 1959, which caught the attention of producer Halby Wallis. After signing a seven-year contract with MGM, she began acting classes with Jeff Corey and shared an apartment with her pet canary, Francis. Alan Young, who played Wilbur, 
revealed on the factor in 2007 that he owned a percentage of Mr. Ed, which made him financially independent. The death of Larry Keating during the show's third season came as a shock to both the cast and audience of Mr. Ed, leading to a decline in popularity. Despite the good work of replacement actors Jack Albertson and Leon Ames, the show never fully recovered. Jack Pierce, the chief makeup artist for Mr. Ed, ended his 40-year career in makeup artistry with this series. Pierce was a legendary figure in Hollywood, known for creating the special makeups for Universal's classic horror productions. After finishing Mr. Ed, actor Alan Young started a broadcast division for the Christian Science Church in Boston. His work on the show was highly regarded, and his post-series endeavors further solidified his status as a talented and versatile performer. MCA tonight. <laughs> In the TV series Mr. Ed, the talking horse only engaged in conversation with Wilbur because he was the only person worth talking to. The human role of Wilbur was played by Alan Young, while the horse, Bamboo Harvester, was an American saddlebred Arabian cross. Bamboo was born in Los Angeles in 1949 and began playing Mr. Ed at around 12 years old. Before his acting career, Bamboo had been a parade horse. During the third season, Larry Keating, who played the role of Wilbur's neighbor, passed away and was replaced by Leon Ames. Bamboo Harvester, also known as Mr. Ed, likely died in 1970 after suffering from health issues such as arthritis and kidney problems. However, there is some confusion about his death, with some claiming that he was alive and well throughout the 70s. It is believed that the horse that Alan Young visited in the 70s was Bamboo's stunt double, Pumpkin, who looked similar to Bamboo and was used for still photos and public appearances as Mr. Ed. Pumpkin was later presented to the public as Mr. Ed, and the fact that Bamboo had died was not made public for years. Ed, I think you're being ridiculous. Do you want to put clothes on? If Mr. Ed brought you joy, and laughter in 1961 or any time since. We'd love to hear your stories, share your favorite memories, and how this classic TV series impacted you personally. Did it inspire you to explore the world of cinema or influence your sense of humor? Perhaps you bonded with family or friends over Mr. Ed's antics or simply enjoyed the unique premise of a talking horse. Whatever your connection to this beloved series, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to engage with our posts by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Let's reminisce together about this piece of television history and how it continues to resonate today. We can't wait to hear your stories. Through the open door, and then onto the moon and take the picture. Hope they got a drugstore up there.